Hello, my little artists. Welcome to week two of quarantine, quarantine, quarantine art with Miss Mitchell. I hope you had a wonderful weekend making extra special greeting cards for all of your loved ones. And today I thought we could dive into the wonderful world of printmaking. It's going to be kind of similar to our found object stamps that we made last week, but a little bit more detailed and we'll be making a finished product together that looks a little something like this. All right, let's get this party started. For today's project, you'll need a pencil and a rough draft piece of paper to sketch your image. You'll need a piece of styrofoam, which you might find in an Amazon package or an old meat tray like I used here. You'll need another piece of white or light colored paper to print your image on, as well as another piece of paper to map your image on. You'll need some paint and a dish to put your paint in. You'll need a water cup with a paintbrush and you'll also need scissors and glue. Before we get started, I wanted to show you the styrofoam square that I used to create my final image. I used this little square and printed it four times. And the most important part is each time you flip your stamp over to stamp it, you need to keep the center of your image in the center of your paper. And to help you remember that, you can mark the back side somehow. I just put a little piece of masking tape here so that as I'm printing my image, I'm gonna keep that center in the middle of my paper and stamp here, rotate, stamp here, rotate, stamp here, rotate, stamp here. And the whole time my masking tape corner stays in the middle so that in the end, my finished product is symmetrical. Okay, so to make our stamp, we just need to cut a square out of our piece of styrofoam. You can measure it perfectly if you want or you can just eyeball it. And one tip about these styrofoam trays is there's natural oils on your fingers. So if you touch this back side where you're gonna be drawing your image too much, the oils from your fingers will get on the styrofoam and it, the paint won't really want to stick to it. So as best you can, try not to touch the surface where you're gonna be drawing your image. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a square out of the back side. This front side usually has a pattern or design on it. So unless you wanna use that pattern or design, flip it over and you're just gonna cut out Square from the flat area of your styrofoam, like so. See how I'm holding it on the edge so my fingerprints don't touch it too much? I'm gonna trim that a little bit. Okay, and then taking your rough draft piece of paper, you're gonna set your styrofoam square on the rough draft paper and trace it. So now you know exactly how large it is and you can plan out your image. Okay, I think I'm going to make mine exactly the same as this one, just so you can see how on earth I went from this little styrofoam square to that finished product. But if you wanna make a different design, here's a few different examples of what will happen. If you choose a corner for your center and you make a square, your finished product will look something like this, bigger square. If you did a point or a triangle in the corner, It'll look like this. And if you do some other kind of fun design, like a little clovery shape, it'll look like this. So whatever you think, choose a shape and you're gonna put that shape in one corner of your rough draft image. I'm gonna stick with my circle. I'm gonna just do a quarter of a circle times four is gonna turn into a whole circle. And then I traced around my little circle just to give it an extra border. And then I did a row of four triangles, one, two, three, four. And I also traced around those. And you don't wanna keep your uh, designs too close together. If I did another line outside of this that was right next to it, it's gonna be really tricky when I go to trace out my shape. So leave about a quarter inch in between all of your designs. Outside of that, I did another bigger circle and doubled that up. And then I made a line all the way around these two sides to give my finished product kind of a border. And then I drew a diamond in the corner here with crisscross. And then I just filled this little area in with kind of a crooked triangle. Okay, so there's my rough draft. 
And I do that so that when I start to carve into my styrofoam square, I know exactly where everything needs to go. It's about the same shape because I traced it because you can only trace into your square one time. As soon as you poke into the styrofoam, that's your image. So you wanna make sure that you know exactly where everything's going. Okay, it's the moment of truth. I'm about ready to transfer my rough draft onto my styrofoam square, but remember you can only scratch into the styrofoam square one time. So make sure you're really happy with your rough draft before you start poking. And a couple tips for transferring your image onto your styrofoam square. You do not want a pencil that's too sharp, too pointy and it'll rip right through the styrofoam. And you also don't want to push too hard. If you're pressing really hard into the styrofoam, you might go right through it. You do have to push hard enough that the styrofoam presses down enough that your paint can stay on the surface without going into your cracks, but you wanna go slow and steady. Don't push too hard and don't use a super sharp pencil. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did when I made my rough draft and I'm gonna start by putting my quarter circle in the corner. See how I'm going nice and slow. You can trace over the same spot a couple times. You can feel the styrofoam kind of crunching down and then scooch over and I had that next circle line on the outside of that. See, I'm kind of rubbing it back and forth, really taking my time. I'm gonna add my four triangles. See how I'm keeping my fingers on the outside so I don't get my oily fingers all over. One triangle, two. So I'm pressing down enough that I can see my image but not so hard that I rip through. Cool. And then I traced those little triangles. Leaving enough space so they don't all blend together. And then I drew my big circle here. Oh, that was a good one. Traced that. Do another little border. Add my line around the edge. My diamond. Uh oh, I don't think I have room for the triangles. Oh, I can squeeze them in. All right. Okay, we're almost ready to start printing our styrofoam stamp. So I'm gonna get all this stuff out of my way. I'm gonna grab my larger sheet of paper to stamp on. I'm gonna pour some paint. I'm gonna try two colors of paint because I'm feeling crazy. You can stick with one if you'd like. And I'm gonna grab my paintbrush and my water cup. I'm gonna pick up my Styrofoam square, see how I'm holding it by the edges so I don't have to touch that front side too much. Grab your paintbrush and drag off all that extra water on the side of your cup. And then you're gonna paint a very thin layer of paint all over the front side of your stamp. You can always add more paint if you need it, but you don't want any big gloops to be going in between the lines of your stamp, so not too much paint. I'm gonna try and blend some pink in there too and see what happens. All right, and then I like to start stamping kind of towards the edge of my paper because it helps me line everything up. But remember, you wanna keep that center shape that you started with in the middle of your page over here. So in this case, this corner is gonna go in the corner of your paper and you're going to set it straight down and as soon as your stamp touches the paper, you can't wiggle it around side to side because that paint has touched the paper. So you just want to set it straight down, give it a little back rub, and then hold on to your piece of paper so it doesn't stick and gently pull your stamp back up. <gasps> Whoa, straight up. Totally cool. Remember, you want to keep the center of your stamp in the middle of your page 
for each stamp. So you can mark it with something on the back side. I have a little piece of masking tape here. That's my corner. So the next time I paint and go to stamp, I want to keep the masking tape corner in the center of my picture. I'm going to do the same thing, a thin layer of purple. A little bit of pink. Make sure the center is in the center. Press it straight down. Give it a back rub. Hold on to your piece of paper and pull it straight back up. Whoa! You're going to continue doing that two more times, keeping the center in the center right here and right here. Okay, I wanted to show you what happens if you get a little too excited and get too much paint on your stamp. The paint goes in between the cracks of your drawing, and when you smush it down, all that paint comes smushing out and goes all over your picture. So you can't really see the white outline as well. That's all right, the best part about this is you can rinse this off in the sink gently, dry it off, and print and use it as many times as you want. Kind of cool. So after your finished print is dry, you can cut it out and mount it onto your background color and have a nice little border and a finished product. Well, there you have it, another fun art project in the books. Thanks so much for joining me again. Of course, we have the joke of the day. What did the artist draw before bed? The curtains. Anywho, make sure you send me a picture of your finished products to ashleysarahmitchell at gmail.com for the chance to be featured as our Kid Art of the Week every Friday. I'll see you next time.